Okay, welcome back. This is EENG uh, 360 and this is Lab 7. In Lab 7, we're going to do a um, rising edge detector and we're going to use a Mohr circuit and a Mealy circuit. Now, in your notes, here was the state graph for a Mohr circuit. You had three states, 0, edge, and 1. You had an input called level, and whenever that input level went from a 0 to 1, that was an edge. So when it went to 1, we were going to go into the edge state, and we are going to output a tick. Now, if level was still 1, we are going to transition to the 1 state to tell me it's a 1. Okay, now, as long as level stayed 1, we are going to stay in the 1 state. The minute level goes back to 0, we will transition back to the 0 state and wait for another edge. Okay, and then if level goes stays at 0, we stay at 0. If level goes to 1, we say, hey, we got an edge. If it stays at 1, we have a 1. So this is the logic behind an edge detection. Three states, one input, and one more output tick assigned to 1. All right, let's go ahead and implement that in VHDL. I've already got it written for you, so I'll just talk through my code. But if you look here, it's lab 7. Uh, here is the more VHDL for detecting a rising edge. There's the test bench on the MOR. We also are going to do this with a melee, we'll talk about later. And then there's the test bench for the melee. And then there's the test harness, which instantiates both the MOR and a melee. All right, so first of all, let's just take a look at our MOR circuit. Okay. So let's go through the MOR circuit. First thing we do is we include our libraries. Okay. We're not doing any addition, so we don't need numeric standard all. Then we do the entity. All right. Well, what things are going into the circuit? Well, it's a synchronous circuit, so you're going to need a clock. You're going to reset it back to the state zero. The level is um, the input, and that's where you're looking to detect an edge. And then tick is an output that says, hey, I found an edge. All right, so there's your entity right there. Okay. Now, the state diagram, which I just had up here, had three states. So what we want to do is we want to use this statement right here to declare a new data type called state type. And it can take on three values, 0, edge, and 1, which are my three states. And then I want to create an instance of that type for my state reg and my next state because I want to know what my current state is and then I want to know what the next state is. Well, what type are those two signals? They're of type state type where I just created that right here. Okay. Then the first thing you do in your R begin in block of your architecture is the thing we've been doing all along. Uh, we take uh, the next state and we assign it to the current state when I get a positive clock edge and um, clock's equal to 1 now because this guy will trip when I have both a positive and negative edge. If I end it with this, it guarantees that, that this entire thing is a positive edge. Okay? So we have a process block here with a sensitivity list of clock and reset. Anytime we get a clock edge, we're going to come into here. Anytime we get a reset, we're going to come into here. But reset is asynchronous, so we've got to check that one first. Got to check reset equal to 1 first. If reset's equal to 1, then we reset. Well, we've defined state 0 to be our reset um, state. So my current state is going to be 0. I'm just going to go where, no matter where I am. I could be in 0 edge or 1. I'm going to go to 0. Okay, if it's not an asynchronous reset, then we check to see if it's a positive edge of a clock. If it's a positive edge of the clock, then I just take my next state and I move that over to my current state. Okay? So this really hasn't changed. I mean, if you go back and look at the last 10 programs, you always have this in. Well, you always have that in there in a synchronous finite state machine. All right, but the, what we got it, what differs is you have to define next state. All right, well, what's next state? Well, you open up this guy. That also is a process block. Yeah, that also is a process block. And it's going to trigger on state reg whenever we change state reg. When do we change state reg? Well, that happens up here in the previous process block when we get a clock. Okay? So if state reg changes, then I have to say, well, where am I currently at? Let me figure out where I'm going to go. I know my current, uh, current state. I need to figure out my next state. But the, uh, the next state could also be a function of level. Where I go depends upon level. All right? So let's go back and bring our state diagram in here. I'm in state 0. If level is 0, level prime there, then I go back to 0 on the next clock. If level's a 1, I go to my edge state. All right, well, let's take a look at that in VHDL. So what I do is I do a case on my current state. Okay? I do a cur uh, state reg. And then I say, well, if I'm in state 0, these are the rules for my next state. If I'm in state edge, these are the rules for my next state. And if I'm in state 1, these are the rules. Okay? Well, what do we say the rule was if I'm in state 0? Well, I look at my input level. If level is equal to 1, 
then what I do is I move to the next state. Let's make this a capital letter. I like making these guys capital. All right, we'll do that. Okay. And then I don't really have an else here because really what you would think is you want to put an else here and you'd say state next equal to state zero. But what I did is I put this statement up here that says, okay, um, as, as a default, just stay where you are. And as a default, do not output tick. Okay. So I've already kind of implied the else part of that because I'm going to stay in state zero. All right, so then you come down to here and you say, well, let's see what happens when I'm in state edge. Well, first thing we want to do is output our more output. So we set tick equal to one. Notice up here I set tick equal to zero. Now you're not going to get a pulse, right? Zero and one, because what happens when you leave the process, it just takes a look at the last assignment statement. You know, it, 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 So it's basically overriding this one. It's ignoring this, because values don't get changed until you leave the process. All right? So then you have to take a look at level. And let's see, we're in state edge. And what, what does level say? Let's go back and look at our state graph. We're in state edge. If level is equal to 1, I go to state 1. If level is equal to 0, I go back to 0. All right, so I'm either going to go to 0 or 1, depending on level. And that's what I've got here. If level is equal to 1, my next state is 1. Let's make this capital. Okay. And then if level is equal to 0, I come down to here, and my next state would be 0. Okay. Well, what about if I'm in state 1? Now let's go back and look at the state graph. If I'm in state 1, if level stays at a 1, I stay there. If level goes to a 0, I transition back to 0. All right. Well, I check level equal to 0, and I say my next state is 0. I like making these caps just because they st stand out. Okay. Now I don't need to do an else here because an else says stay in state 1, and I've done that by this statement up here as soon as I enter the process block. Okay, stay where you are. So it's kind of a default. But all my, both my variables, state next and tick, are being assigned regardless of how I traverse through there, which is going to eliminate the possibility of unintended memory. All right, so that's my next state logic. We basically are setting state next, and then we're using state next in the process up here when we get a clock. Okay, and then we have that state type, zero, edge, one. All right, well, there's one thing left to do here, and no, actually there's not, because what we did in our next state logic is we actually combined our next state logic with our output logic. So at this point, we're good. So let's go over here and click More Rising Edge. Make sure we saved it. Behavior Check Syntax. And let's do the Test Bench. Okay. And let's see, uh, Test Bench looks like it's good. You can always rerun it if you're not certain. And then make sure test bench more selected, simulate behavior model. And PC is running real slow, so we'll see what happens here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so let's see. What do we do? We kind of shrink down, get some nice real estate on here so your teacher's got bad eyesight, can see what's going on. And there we go. Up above here is my clock. I have a reset, and then I have my level. Notice that my level comes along, and it goes high right here. And then on the next clock, I actually output a tick because it's a synchronous circuit. It's more. more outputs change on the clock edge. Okay? Uh, they change when you transition to states. Okay? And then um, level stays high, okay? but my tick only lasts for one clock, just when the edge occurred. Okay? And then level goes low for a few clocks, and then level goes high. And then on the next clock edge, a positive edge, we get another tick. And then it goes low. So we only output tick one time when we're in the edge state. Now, what would be really nice is if we could uh, see our, um, our state variable. Remember our state variables? Because all we're seeing is clock reset level tick. Well, we're seeing the variables of the test bench file. But what would really be nice, if I could see the value of um, these guys right here. But see, they're not inputs or outputs. So how do you get those on your timing diagram? Well, you can do that. There's a way to do that. And I'll show you. So what we can do here is notice. I've got test bench more. Uh, I've got U1. Where did U1 come from? Now let's go back and look at that. In the test bench file, I instantiated a component and I gave it a name of U1. All right, so there's my U1. Okay. So what I can do here is I can right click on U1 and I can say add to wave. And it added all the variables of that component, all the variables in the entity, plus all the signals, state reg and state next. 
but you notice I map clock to TB clock, so I don't need that one because they're the same signals. Reset is the same thing as TB. This is why I prefix test bench with TB so I can distinguish. Level and TB level got connected together in the instantiation and so forth. So I can really come down here and get rid of all these guys and delete that. Okay. And then I want to get state reg and state next, but the way you do that is you have to rerun things. So you got to restart the simulation and then rerun and then zoom and there you go. Not only do you have your input output variables, you also have your state variables. So right here on the first clock edge, I'm in state zero. I transition to state zero because level is low. I transition to state zero again because level is low. I transition to state zero because level is low. I transition to state zero because level is low. Then on this clock edge, level takes on a value of one. So now I transition to state edge. And you can see it over here, even though the spelling got truncated here. But because we only stay in edge for how long? one clock cycle. So on the next clock cycle, I transition from edge to one. I've detected my edge and the input is still a one. And then I stay there. I trans I stay in state one for another clock, state one for another clock, state one for another clock. And then right here, notice level is now zero. I'm transitioning from state one down to state zero. And I stay in state zero. 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 On the next clock edge here, input has gone high. I transition to my edge state. I output my more variable tick. And then I transition to the one state because level is still high. And same thing, level goes low. We transition back to the zero state. So that's a pretty neat feature because that actually allows you to debug and see variables inside a component. Okay, so that was the more rising edge detector. We detected the rising edge. And with a test bench file. Okay, I'm going to stop there. See you next time.